I, um, I want to point out um, our, our fisheries department provided the fish and Gemini Power paid, is paying for the bill. As the chief of, of Nipissing First Nation, I'm pleased to welcome all of you to our, our traditional territory. Our territory was vast, uh, but through treaties and, and whatever, we've, we have been reduced in our area. I want to spend a special welcome to Chief Joe Bucknell who is here with us this evening. And I'm very pleased that he's with us. Welcome, Joe. As people, we have lived here that dates us back to over 10,000 years. And during that time, we have been stewards of our territory and our natural resources. In fact, you're going to eat the uh, fish from Lake Nipissing. And as, as Nipissings, we've always been known as traders of fish. <clears throat> our trade system was very expensive, extensive. <laughs> And it was north, south, east, and west. <laughs> we didn't discriminate. As stewards of, of the natural resources, we are pleased to say that we're continuing to fish and harvest the fish in a sustainable manner. We now have a recognized and certified commercial fishery. We no longer have to trade in, trade secretly and we are free from harassment from the Ministry of Natural Resources. <laughs> I don't know if there are MNR people here tonight, but it is so good. You know, that this, this we are now practicing and exercising our inherent and our treaty rights. Our staff biologist, Richard Rowe, and his staff were successful in establishing this commercial fisheries. And it's based on science. As a nation, we've established our own fishing bylaw that sets out a quota system for our commercial fishers. And that will ensure the sustain sustainability of, of the Lake Pickerel, or as some people call it, walleye. The fishing bylaw also includes a moratorium during the spawning season. This means that those commercial fishers do not set their nets during the spawning season. We just say, no, leave the spawners alone and let our fisheries grow. And we have great buy-in to this. It was done through community consultation and a community vote. The monitoring of, of the fish stock now has the Ministry of Natural Resources using our data to help them in their reporting on the health of the fish populations in Lake Nipissing. It's a real turnaround, and we're proud of that. And we thank our, our fisheries department for that. We're so pleased to to be able to recruit Richard to our, to our staff. And I know Richard spoke to you earlier today about our new economic development. And it's a partnership with Gemini Power. 
plans, as Richard would have told you, are underway so that we will open up a wood pellet mill on our land. And we're going to begin producing pellets that will fulfill industrial and residential uses. Too often these wood pellets, and I remember what Mike, our MC has said, these wood pellets are shipped in. And as soon as they arrive in the city, they're gone. And so we're, we're going to be very pleased in June to have those bags of wood pellets that state this is a Nipissing First Nation product. And we will do this in a sustainable way. We are mindful of our responsibility of stewards of, of, of the resources. And we've always been that way. And as a First Nation, we're always open to new partnerships. We do, we are willing for sincere business partners, partnerships. We do our due diligence and um, we are open to this. I wanted to mention something about our logo and you, it's not displayed right yet, but our logo says Nipissing First Nation. And if you could look at it, right there, okay? If, if you look at it closely, it says the land, the people, and the future. <laughs> it disappeared. <laughs> Believe me, the land, the people, and the forward motion of, of the deer is there. So in closing, I wish all of you a continued productive conference and enjoy your fish. <laughs>